Welcome to Real Crusades History's Knights Templar series. Part 1. The Philosophy of Hugh of Payon. Like all medieval religious orders, the Knights Templar had a founding personality at their beginnings. Hugh of Payon, a French veteran of the First Crusade, founded the order sometime around 1118. Though historians know little about him, there is some evidence of his personal views which led him to redefine the notion of the Christian monk. A letter survives which scholars believe was written by Hugh. In this letter, Hugh calls himself a sinner and addresses the brothers of the temple, who at the time were fairly small in number. During this early period, the Templars had critics who claimed that it was not fitting for religious brothers to ride into battle rather than spend their days in contemplation. However, Hugh rebuked this criticism sharply. Look, brothers, if you were supposed to seek rest and quiet, there would be no religious orders left in God's church. Even the desert hermits were not able to escape work altogether, and they had to work for food, clothing, and the other necessities of this mortal life. If there was no one plowing and sowing, harvesting and preparing food, what would the contemplatives do? If the apostles had said to Christ, we want to be free and contemplate, not run about or work. We want to be far from people's objections and disputes. Where would the Christians be now? Here we see in Hugh an esteem for the active life. He extended this understanding that without physical labor, Christian civilization would be impossible to the notion that Christians must win political power and military strength to preserve and expand their societies. Helen Nicholson, one of the world's leading experts on the Templars, compares Hugh's attitude as expressed in this letter, to ideas presented in the medieval epic poem La Chanson de Roland. The archbishop said, watching Roland cut the Muslims to pieces, You're doing well. A knight who bears arms and sits a horse ought to act like this. He should be fierce and strong in battle. Otherwise, he's not worth four pence and should be a monk in one of those churches and pray all day for our sins. Nicholson further compares Hugh's letter to another medieval poem, La Malignage Guillaume. In this story, a fierce warrior who's spent his life fighting Muslims decides to do penance for his sins by becoming a monk. His abbot sends him on an errand and warns him that if he is attacked by bandits, he may not defend himself, because monks cannot use violence. When William heard this, he was enraged. Master, he said, the rules of your order are too harsh. Such an order could come to a bad end. May God burden the person who set it up. The order of knighthood is much more worthwhile. They fight against Turks and pagans and allow themselves to be martyred for love of God. They are often baptized in their own blood in order to conquer the kingdom of right. Monks only want to drink and eat, read and sing and sleep and snore. They are cooped up like hens, fattening up, daydreaming in their psalters. William said, May God bring shame on this order, and Jesus curse whoever set it up, because he was a bad man and full of cowardice. The order of knighthood is more worthwhile, because they fight the Saracen race, take their lands, and conquer their towns, and convert the pagans to our law. The ideas expressed in these medieval documents are really not terribly unusual in the history of Latin Christianity. As far back as St. Benedict, 
the Latins held to this idea that religious orders should not spend all their time in contemplation, that they should be engaged in physical activity. Hence, the monks of the West becoming famous for producing excellent wine, beer, textiles, metalwork, and a whole host of other products. As the Latin West gained in political power, as well as faced the onslaught of Islam's expansion into Christian territory, this thinking, not surprisingly, led to the notion that certain members of the clergy should be fighters. Hugh's philosophy was really very practical. If you love Christendom, you must be willing to fight for it. The Templars, he insisted, engaged in a different sort of spirituality, but one that was no less valid. Their discipline and military achievements were a gift to God for the preservation of his holy places in the temporal order.